Welcome everybody to Dead Talk Live, and today we have a very, very special guest, the co-star of Netflix's latest number one show, Echoes, Karen Robinson. Karen, thank you so much for being here. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. I'm I'm doing I'm doing so good. I mean, how could I not be doing good with what this show is doing on Netflix? Oh my god. Oh <laughs> what a fabulous seven episode limited series. You mm. play Sheriff Floss. So let's mm. get right to it. Your portrayal of Sheriff Floss next to Michelle Monaghan's Lenny and Gina is for me by far the most interesting character of course next to the twins played by michelle uh sheriff floss i mean you you just are like the glue that brings it all together now when you booked this role what was your hope to making floss your own oh god you know i feel like i bring the same intention to every single role that i do um, and it's to tell the truth, to to tell the truth and to discover, to keep discovering the character throughout the entire process. So, uh, you know, I tend to go into these things doing, knowing nothing. I, um, yeah, you do your research, but you can't really know the character until you've experienced the character. Mm-hmm. And you can't do that until you're in the experience itself. So I, 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 I just wanted to listen and respond authentically and tell the truth and also be really, really true to what the creators intended. Like what what it is, what is it that they want from me? How do they need to tell the story and how can I help them do that? Oh, that's beautiful. Now being in every episode of this show, as the story unfolds from the first episode to the seventh, in your opinion, in your opinion, what do you think is the underlying theme of this show? Is it how one little lie leads to another and until it gets so big, you're in a situation where you are trapped? That's my takeaway. What's yours? I, my takeaway is that that is a part of it. Um, I also think, uh, um, I think it is also warning us about judging books by their covers, mm-hmm. you know, literally yeah. um, uh, deciding too quickly who who's good and who's bad. And why is it that we come to the table with these assumptions? Yeah, I, that's an, I think that's another thing. But yeah, there there is, I think, um, a big part of it is how um, is how untruths can um, keep revisiting us throughout our lives and throughout um, the lives of the generations that come after us. And it doesn't only affect your life, it affects the family, your people you love. It, it ends up eventually destroying everyone's lives. And that's what this story talks about. If, it, if it's not addressed, it, absolutely, if it's not addressed. I mean, people make mistakes all the time. And mm-hmm. I think people tell people people tell lies or um, at least obfuscate the truth for, you know, sometimes for good reason. Like our, our parents told us stuff that oh, wasn't yeah. true. They just needed to get through the day or, <laughs> you know, or, or for, anyway, for really good reason. But if it's not, if at some point, it's it's not it's it's not metabolized if it's not addressed if if um if the truth doesn't come out then yes it, it will continue to poison yes i completely know, agree into now, the future now sheriff floss is a mm-hmm. very smart cookie she plays herself out to be this uh small town sheriff oh you know i don't know much about this very yeah. smart, very cunning in her own little way. In your words, how does the sheriff use this approach to her advantage? Well, let me just say off the bat that I think Sheriff Floss is genuinely a nice, she, she is a kind person. She is um, a nice person and she loves her community. Mm-hmm. She's 
lived there a long time. She knows all of these people intimately. So these people and her community, they matter to her. And um, and I I think that she I think that her um 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 charisma yes. has been a part of getting her to where she is. I mean, to be able to be um to achieve uh, the level that she has in her career, especially as a black woman in a small town in America. In Virginia, that, in Virginia that, too. That takes, yeah, in Virginia. That takes savvy, that um, takes uh, smarts, um, that takes acute intelligence. And she has to know the territory yes. in which she exists, right? So um, I think all of that comes to bear. Um, however, her particular style of investigation is, I think, um, disarm them with charm. Yeah. Disarm them with charm. And they will tell you, you know, the, the story is going to come out. Very gonna... observant, looking for that little mistake that might That's slip right. out. right. <laughs> Keep them talking and they will tell you the story sooner or later. And she is dogged, right? She does oh. not let up. Uh-uh. That's what I love about her. Now, every character is different. You've been an actor for a while now. How? What kind of preparation did you do to get into Floss's mindset? Small town sheriff, uh, smart, cunning. But, you know, like you said, in the South, being a woman, sheriff and dealing with this uh, prominent family. And, you know, so how did you get into that mindset? Honestly, John, I think when the material is written exceptionally well, which I think this is, oh, yeah. there isn't a hell of a lot of research that I have to do. It's not like I have to go in. And when I say that, I don't mean I don't do my homework. Oh, yeah. I mean that I don't have to go live in a small town in Virginia for a month in order to um, in order to approach the character. Um, I do have to do work in terms of my accent because I speak with, you know, a, a sort of mixture of British, Jamaican, um, Canadian accent in my everyday life. But that's not the way they sound in Virginia. Yeah. So there was a lot of work that I had to do there. Um, um, and I feel like once I got there, I started to listen because there's nothing like actually going out into the community and listening to the way people speak and watching the way they move their bodies, how they feel about their environment, how they um, sort of communicate with each other. And there are also, you know, uh, there's so many examples on TV. There's such great content that has already been made mm -hmm. that speaks volumes about, you know, small town american life oh yeah so um i think uh i i took all of that on board when i was um when i when i was approaching this character and also like personality traits from certain people that you know i follow on social media and that sort of thing it, it was it it's so much fun and always 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 my mother shows up in just about every single character that i do <laughs> i think that i think her face you know is sort of transplanted yeah. onto mine and um and yeah that she she always helps um, so I, uh, yeah, it's, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a mixture of things mm. that I, do. and specifically for this character, I, I just plucked from everywhere and everything that I thought would help me in this situation. My favorite scenes are the interactions between you and Lenny slash Gina, Michelle Monaghan. Mm. Now mm. we know from the beginning that the sheriff is suspicious. Lenny mm. disappears. Lenny shows up right away. You know, what side of the horse did you fall off from? That's yeah. weird because the blood was on the left shoulder. You know, yeah. you know, you can't, you know, that yeah. something is up. What did you think Floss thought? Did she have any idea? I mean, she knows something is up, but do you think she had any theories as to what was going on? I think that Floss, oh, I think any good detective has a working theory 
and and also are um they're able to change that theory as you know they take on more facts but i think that floss has been watching lenny and gina with good reason because they've been getting in trouble a lot throughout mm -hmm. their lives so um i think i think floss has had them in her purview for quite a while and i mean not to give away any spoilers if anybody doesn't want to hear any spoilers close your ears now but remember when in that first meeting with Floss and Gina she says to Gina well Lenny's saddle and bridle are missing with her horse mm -hmm. so something in adding up in this in this initial uh situation yeah. this uh this this event isn't adding up in terms of what it is that um people are asking me to believe it is that you know she's gone missing and floss and, is the type of, and floss to me is the type of person that if something doesn't add up it'll just eat at her eat at her eat at her unanswered questions does not sit well with sheriff floss no no and i find it interesting that you use the word eat because that's also what i do all the time <laughs> <laughs> I would be stressed. No. She's like Smarties, Cheetos, popcorn, <laughs> and apple, whatever. It so, helps us think. So, Michelle, uh, you know what? I ne that looking back and remembering now the episodes and all the times that we do see you snacking, it, I didn't catch on to it until you actually <laughs> just mentioned it. Now, Michelle Monaghan, again, playing two roles. She did a fantastic job. I've spoken to her. She was a previous guest of ours. Uh, when you were approaching and you had your scenes and whether it was with Lenny or Gina, did you have to sort of help Michelle with her character by approaching your character a little differently when she was talking to Lenny and when she was supposedly talking to Gina as well? Uh, or did you just treat them as the same person, uh, whether it was Lenny, Gina, it, you just, Floss had the same approach. I don't think, I, I mean, I can't treat them as the same. I couldn't treat them as the same person because they're not the same person. Yeah. And um, Gina has uh, has left, um, you know, Mount Echo and gone off to, you know, a, a big metropolis and has a different life and a different attitude to Mount Echo and its inhabitants at this point. So I think that there's a slightly, um, I think Floss is smart enough to know that she has to adjust to whatever energy she's getting, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, at the same time, Floss's ultimate um, focus is to solve whatever, you know, whatever yeah. mystery she's pursuing. So, so, Really, um, really, it, it, it's in treating different people differently. She really needs to get through all of that to get to the ultimate point. Exactly. Right? So, um, and and having said all of that, um, Michelle Monaghan, um, who is who blew my mind every day with she did a fantastic she, job with what she did with these characters i i would go as far to say that that child did not need my help <laughs> I, you know what i'm saying yeah. like she, she uh, as actors of course we're all there for each other mm -hmm. and uh, and she was working terrifically hard and so uh you know i'm sure i, I was there as a, as a support but really her acting chops, her level of preparation, she had her it. knowledge of uh, the subtle differences between these characters, all of that stuff. She was so on point that I just basically, I just basically had to show up and not screw up. <laughs> that, yeah, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I totally agree. We're almost out of time, but I do have one final question for you. Uh huh. Uh, a scene with Floss that really surprised me is that in the interrogation room towards the latter half of the episodes, when the Gina does reveal the truth to you, you seem totally surprised. I thought Floss was really onto it, that these two were doing this shady stuff. 
and you're surprised like do you really expect me to believe that total shock like they came out of left field was floss genuinely surprised when the truth was revealed to her did she really have no idea that this might have been a possibility i think that what surprises floss is that she thought that she was getting so close to the um to to putting this thing to bed mm -hmm. finally after decades yeah it's and the realization that she was basically back where she started in in terms of being able to lay the blame where it belonged I think that was the shock. Yeah, and that she couldn't because, like she says, I can't charge either of you. Exactly. Yeah. I want to thank you so much, Karen. This has been absolutely fascinating. Guys, the show, again, is called Echoes. It's currently the number one streaming show on Netflix. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Check it out. It's a seven-episode limited series. Our guest, Karen, here is a major star co-star i mean she's she's a big part of the pie let's put it that way thank you again so much karen for... thank you john it was a pleasure to be here it, it was an awesome chat thank you to our audience those who are tuning in live and those who will be watching this later on check out the show on behalf of karen robinson and myself stay safe and stay walking everybody bye bye hi everybody